With 4 million sounds, what will you create? Take the free trial today. Hello and welcome to another Super Booth Home Edition. Uh, we're talking to Chris Calcutt there in uh, sunny Brighton. Well, I don't think it is sunny today, it's raining, uh, which must mean yeah, it's Novation time. It's Novation time, right? Hey, yes, indeed. Yeah, hi, Nick. How are you doing? You okay? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, so, excellent. Uh, so what what are we looking at? I, I, um, I know you had a release for Super Booth and uh, you're still going ahead. So yeah. Yeah, what are we looking at? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, today it's um, it's Wavetable Editor Day for both the Peak and the Summit uh, synthesizers. Um, that was pretty much the number one request that we've been having for both Peak since it was released, actually, and also for Summit, of course. Um, and so we've been working hard behind the scenes and getting the Wavetable Editor ready. Um, and now we've got user waves directly into both Peak and into Summit. Oh, good score. Because, I mean, I think in the sort of current wave of hardware wavetables, I think yeah, it's fair to say that uh, Peak was probably the first or one of the first. And and subsequently, none of them have yet got, <laughs> um, or very few have got actual wave, user wavetables, whereas you've got it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, when 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 Pete was originally announced, we had I think about thirty two wave tables in there. Then we upped that uh, quite considerably. I think we've got seventy um, kind of factory wave tables in there. Um, but you know, as I say, people have been really requesting the opportunity to put their own waves inside uh, the synthesizer. Um, and yeah, now we've got it. So um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a great great way of just basically creating your own unique sounds. You know, you can basically create waves from scratch. Put them into the summit and then treat them as if they're a basic wavetable oscillator. Um, so it's it's, oh. it's pretty powerful stuff. Oh well, let's have a look then. Is it uh, via components? Yeah. I'd imagine, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So components, which we've got up on the screen here, this is kind of the management software, if you like, for all of the uh, all of the hardware we produce. I guess uh, this is online, but it's also a standalone as well. So if you don't want to access it online, you don't have to. You can download the standalone. And here, just go to the uh, to the summit page. Um, of course, this is taking me to the librarian, first of all, and you can see there's, there's a ton of kind of free presets that we're putting out. We keep putting these out. But if I click here, we go to Wavetable Editor. And the first thing is we see a library of wavetables. We've been um, collaborating with Noisier, uh, and those guys have come up with a raft of really, really strong wavetables out of the, out, you know, off, off the bat. And if you want to, though, you can hit Create Wavetable here. And here we go into the Wavetable Editor. Ah. So this is basically the environment that we work in uh, to actually produce our own wavetables. Now, um, the wavetable structure that we have with Peak and with Summit is that we have five wave shapes per wavetable. We have five basic index points, if you like, um, and you access all five of them here and you just click on them. So, for example, here I've just started off with a, a basic sine wave, um, but I've got a few tools over to the right hand side. And for example, here's the pencil tool. And now I just click and drag. I can basically draw that shape in. And there we go, we've got a wave. So we can get that into the instrument really easily. I've just initialized the patch here, but if I click on uh, Live Edit, let's go to User Wavetable 1, Live Edit. Um, and now if I just switch through to a wavetable, if we just scroll through all the original um, sort of factory ones, we get through to User Wavetables, and we've got 10 different slots um, for those waves. So here we go to that first one. Yeah, there we go. And live edit is turned on. So this should basically now give me, well, we've got a sine wave because that's the other indexes, but if I move down, there's the shape that I've just drawn on the screen. Right, okay. Um, so yeah, so it's really super easy. We've been working hard on the user interface aspect and trying to make that as kind of accessible as possible. So, you know, we can free draw here. Um, we've also got a line tool as well. So if I was minded, so I could just kind of quickly draw in using kind of a straight line tool that's there available. So now we've got the two shapes in there. Yeah, I'm scrolling through. Alternatively, um, we've got some standard shapes as well. So the usual suspects here. So let's just grab a, a sawtooth and just drag that in. Um, there ah, we go. Okay. And now... Yeah. Well, you can, interestingly, you can hear, because of the, the resolution for that sign, we're a couple of octaves up. And that kind of brings me neatly onto this little section underneath that we have as well. 
Um, we've actually got control over all the harmonics, the partials for the waves here as well. So for example, you can see here, this is the amplitude, the level for each of the harmonics. So if I just bring in the fundamental, we'll get a, a deeper. Well, I think you could call that wave called pumpkin smile, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, exactly. Well, in fact, let's give it a name because we can obviously rename these as well. So I'll just quickly call this pumpkin. <laughs> There we go. Um, and if I just again hit that live edit button, we should find, yeah, it's put it into the peak as, as the name there as well. Um, so yeah, so basically super easy access to being able to create your own wavetables freehand or using some of the nice tools that we've got there as well. So I, I mean, guessing, I mean, that's free. I mean, what about your own sounds? I mean, you should, you can drag them yeah. in as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, for example, um, well, firstly, there's a couple of things that we can do. Um, what I'll quickly do is just is just gonna, I'm going to quickly save this um, this wavetable into the into the into the unit. So, you know, when you do the power cycle, you know, that's always going to be it's always going to be in there for you. And you do that essentially in the oscillator page here. And if you just bank across over to page nine, I think it is. It says here on the uh, uh, summit screen, pumpkin save. So I'm going to hit save. Now that wave is now stored in Summit um, and obviously in Peak if you're using a Peak. Um, so that means it's always accessible. But if you want to bring in your own sounds as well, well, firstly, I mean, firstly, if I just click on this first noisier um, wavetable, you can see that just brings it in here. And I can save as many sounds as I want into the library here on the left hand side and just bring those back whenever I want. Um, but also, if you want to bring in your own um, waveforms, you know, maybe from a sample or something like that, we can do that too. So I'm just going to click on New Wavetable, hit Create Wavetable. Um, let's get the initialized patch and onto that so we can hear it as well. So uh, where are we? Here we go. That was Pumpkin, wasn't it? Yeah. We'll go Live Edit. Um, and now I've got an Import button here as well. So if I click on Import, I can choose a third-party wavetable or an audio file, so a WAV file. So we we'll choose WAV file, um, and I've got some um, single cycle waveforms here from, uh, I think these are Adventure Kids single cycles. So I can just click on a waveform out of my browser. I don't know if that's up on your screen, but here yeah. I'll just click open awesome. audio file. Okay, great. And now I can use this as a little kind of um, auditioning sort of position tool. Um, and I'll just click import a waveform and you can see it's just brought in. It's a basic single cycle here, but that's just brought that waveform in for me. Um, alternatively, I could say, OK, let's get audio file. Let's uh, now instead go to the desktop. And yeah, I've got um, a drum loop here from Splice. So I'll just hit open audio file. And again, I can kind of choose to take 256 samples from that waveform and put it into a single wave window. Or I could use um, the sample to populate all five of the wavetable windows. So if I click import wavetable instead, we'll see now we've got a full waveform there, which has been, which I think is taking, well, we, we're working in 256 samples per window. So that's five, um, five times 256. Yeah, I did, I did some maths before. It's a thousand. 280, I think, in yeah. total, in terms so of samples. So it would be, it would so, be the first two, 1,280 samples of that yeah, file, from, unless you said exactly. start it at somewhere else. Right. Yeah, exactly right. So, I mean, again, if, if you look at the import thing here, when you've got your file, open audio file, you've got this audition, and you can choose the start point for where the file would start from, and then it's going to take 1,280 uh, 1, samples from that and populate the, uh, the windows for you. So, yeah, so that's now. We've got the live edit in there. So once again, if I just play some notes here. Yeah, that's bringing that wavetable in for me. Um, and again, I can use the LFO perhaps just to scroll through that automatically. I could use the envelope as well, modulation one envelope to add a bit of shape to it too. Um, and we've got 10 of these slots as well. So, you know, you can create 10 of your own user, um, user wavetables and you know, once they're stored, saved into the uh, into the instrument, they're always there for you to use. But of course, you can use your library to uh, to access as many as you want as well and store them in there. So, so um, yeah. um, does does it require a, a firmware update to to get it into? Yeah, 
Yeah, indeed, absolutely. So the firmware update is provided via components. Components is completely free. As I say, it's very available as a standalone software or also as an online um, an online version as well. So if you're using Chrome or uh, I think Opera as well, but certainly with Chrome, if you've got Web MIDI there, um, the communication is open with the instrument. Um, you just basically get hold of components, the latest version, and then in your firmware tab at the top here, um, we'll be able to deliver you the latest firmware for the Peak or for the Summit. That will be then installed onto the instrument. And then of course you've got access to those wavetable slots. And the wavetable editor is just part of, of components too. Um, and I should say as well, that's completely free. You know, there's absolutely no charge whatsoever for, uh, for accessing this. It's all, you know, it's all just available to Peak and Summit users all part of the service so um indeed uh, yeah uh, uh, when when is this available uh is it kind of going to be you yeah know, uh, yeah it's yeah so um this this was obviously going to be something that we were going to talk about at super booth so for super booth weekend it's going to be available i believe the date is the 23rd of april so depending on when this video actually goes live it should potentially be already available for people to to get hold of and have some fun with so um yeah so i mean it's yeah basically it's going to be for for that weekend brilliant thank you very yeah. much chris that's awesome um so well i My hope pleasure. hopefully hopefully we'll see you again at you know some other yes. event physically um before too long i do hope so yeah absolutely i mean the sooner we can you know sort of get back into you know actually getting our hands on all these fantastic devices at, at trade shows the better in my opinion it's um it's a real shame that we're not over in berlin this time around but you know next year um it's going to be even bigger and better i'm sure so uh, yeah but thanks very much for having me over. And actually, just before I go, I should just hit this little rocket at the bottom because this is a bit of fun. Oh, Can yes. Just, well, look. <laughs> just click on that. And we've got a whole load of sounds from space. Basically, we've got a, a whole load of the NASA audio collection basically baked into the components editor. So, you know, we've just got a load more stuff to play around with. So there's a lot. I mean, there's tons and tons of, uh, you know, content here to get going with. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a nice thing. And it really, as I say, it just gives you that opportunity to sculpt your own sounds and create your own unique sounds within the instrument. It's a lot of fun. Great, Chris. Thank you very much. See you next time. That's, thanks a lot. Cheers.